in SEC gymnastics for a span covering three decades. If you took a survey asking who would win the league title, the answer was either the University of Alabama or Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> but this year, someone might say Florida. Or if you ask just right, you might hear go Tigers. That's right. Parody has come to the SEC, and the choices aren't quite so clear. So what do you think? Will the winner be brand A or B or brand X? The answer coming up next. host to the Southeastern Conference Championship in gymnastics. And if you're a gymnastic fan, this is the place to be. It should be packed to the rafters and rocking here tonight as Worldspan presents the best in women's college athletics. Hello, everybody. I'm Brian Drever. And if you are a gymnastic fan, you know that this championship has been dominated by two teams for the last 13 years. But this year, we could have a surprise. Not only that, we've added a seventh team to the Southeastern Conference this year, Arkansas, a team full of freshmen. Part of their charm is their unpredictability, so who knows what can happen. The big story this year, however, is parity. And if 197 or better is the score that it's going to take to win the title, we've got four, maybe five teams capable of reaching that mark. But if you have to pick a favorite, who better than to start with the defending national champions and the closest thing we have to a home team here in Birmingham. For more on that, let's go to my broadcast partner, Lori strong Ballard. Brian, well, Bama comes in here as the defending national champions. Last year, they were still without that coveted SEC title. Sarah, are you prepared to change that tonight? Well, I think our ladies are ready. Um, we're excited about the championship. I think it's going to be one of the most closely contested meets uh, in the history of the SEC championship, and we're proud to be a part. If there is a chink in your arm or something you're concerned with, what would that be? But I think the biggest thing is to get off to a good start on vaulting. Uh, we have a lot of freshmen and a lot of youth on our team, freshmen and sophomore routines. So if we can get those ladies off to a good start and comfortable early in the meet, I think we'll be fine. Well, good luck tonight. We wish you the best. Thank you. Brian, Alabama will battle for their fifth SEC title. Thanks, Lori, with Suzanne Yocklin, coach of the defending and 12-time SEC champs. Coach, lucky number 13. Oh, I don't know. I don't believe in luck. I uh, believe just in hard work, and we've certainly done that. So I feel good about tonight. If there are any concerns about the way your team will perform tonight, would you mind sharing them with us? What might they be? Well, I think just the rotation for us will be difficult because you're a little jittery right at the beginning of a competition, and we have to do the most difficult two events right off the bat. So, um, you know, I feel like the draw was not necessarily a good one for us or to our advantage, but if we can get through those, uh, I think we'll just roll right through the rest of the competition. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. That's the story from the two perennial favorites here, but for the first time, we have a real spoiler at the SEC Championships. For more on that story, let's go to the third member of our broadcast team, Jen Hildred. Well, Brian, it's been 14 years since someone other than Georgia or Alabama has won the SEC title. That was Florida in 1989, and Rhonda Fain just took over the Florida program this year, but you guys have put together a very strong year, already beat Alabama. Yeah. We're going to see something good from your team tonight? Absolutely. They are so ready, and they're on fire and extremely excited, and they want to win. And our warm-ups and practice have been unbelievable, so I'm really excited. One thing for sure about your team, you've sort of developed a reputation for having some pretty creative routines. <laughs> Our gator chomp in the water? Well, maybe. I mean, you tell me. Is that going to continue? Well, well yeah, absolutely. I, we are extremely creative, especially on bars, though, as well. Um, very unique routines and releases, and we're kind of known for that. Well, guys, uh, Florida certainly going to be a team to watch tonight. A couple of other potential spoilers. LSU, led by the dean of the SEC coaches, Dee Dee Bro, in her 26th season as head coach of the Tigers. She's got some great stars. Super freshman April Burkholder, Lauren Campagnoni, who was gymnast of the week a few weeks back during the season here. And how about Auburn? Coach Jeff Thompson has them already qualified in the regionals, along with his wife, Rochelle. He'll have all-rounders Courtney Puckett, Mary Nell Pate, Casey Stein to lead the team. So it's going to be a very interesting competition here tonight, not only among those teams, but individuals. How about the top-ranked gymnast in the country, Gina Rice from Alabama, with her teammate, Kristen Sterner. They'll get great competition in the individual all-around from Georgia's Corey Fritzinger and Chelsea Bird. LSU, led by the outstanding freshman April Burkholder. 
Florida and their creative star, Orly Smooch. Auburn's Courtney Puckett has already set a school record in the individual all-around. And we mentioned Arkansas, a team of freshmen led by Tiffany Berry. Melanie Zaharias of Kentucky looking to go for the... Welcome back to Bartow, where the teams are lined up in the hallways, preparing to enter the arena and beginning to demonstrate some of the great spirit that is running through this building with all these talented young athletes getting set to go out and compete in front of a huge crowd here at Bartow. Their enthusiasm is infectious, and we expect this to be one of the best SEC championships ever. Seven teams competing for the first time, counting Arkansas, on each of four apparatus, and there will be seven rotations so that each team can get all four apparatus into their competition. There will be an overall team champion, an individual all-around champion, and each apparatus will have a champion. Now, prior to the competition was the draw for the order in which the teams would compete. And it is quite a ceremony, Laurie Strong-Ballard. Absolutely. It's been a long-standing tradition here in the SEC, and it really has a great importance. A lot of the coaches believe in building momentum and the importance of starting on a good event. Florida received the most favorable draw, the Olympic draw, finishing on floor. We're very happy with the rotation order that we drew. Um, but, you know, everyone has to compete every single event out there. And um, we just have to do our job. But... Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a good order. For the first rotation, this is the order in which they'll go. Alabama on vault, Georgia bars, Louisiana State beam, Kentucky on floor, three teams with a bye. And Alabama, we heard Coach Sarah Patterson say with the youngsters, she wants to start out strong. She's starting out with her strongest competitor, Gina Rice. It is a very interesting strategy. They're starting with a veteran, someone who is capable of scoring big. In fact, she scored a perfect 10 right here against Georgia just a couple weeks ago. They have a young team, and they really want to start off strong and get the big scores out there. Well, a perfect 10 would certainly set the crowd afire here in Bartow Arena tonight, as it did that night against Georgia. So here is Gina Rice with her one and only vault. Same vault, the Yurchenko layout full. It's scored out of a 10. Just a tiny hop on the landing. An amazing start that will certainly build confidence for Alabama. 9.850 for Gina Rice. She gets him out of the box in a hurry here and starts piling up the score early. Take another look at it. I almost think this score, 985, is a little conservative. It may have hurt her score going early in the lineup but it certainly will start Alabama off on the right track. Well, the judges have to leave themselves a little bit of room for improvement. Very little improvement possible on Chelsea Bird's performances over the course of this year. As a sophomore now, she has really come into her own. She goes on uneven parallel bars. So Shaposhnikova, well done. Now, Georgia was concerned about starting on bars not only because you have jitters at the beginning of the meet, but also because this is one of their weaker events and going up first, the scores are gonna be a little bit tight. Chelsea Bird took a couple of turns as SEC Gymnast of the Week this year. Finishing up here with the double layout, hits the landing, great job. Oh, Georgia's definitely doing the job on their side of the floor with a 9.900. Chelsea Bird keeps the numbers coming for the defending SEC champion, Georgia Gym Dogs. Only problems throughout this routine are very, very tiny form breaks. You can see a few bent knees right there in her Takachev, but it is so sky high and it happens quickly, it's hard for the judges to detect that. Coach Dee Dee Bro having a word with her freshman Taryn Martinjack, who's going to go on the balance beam. LSU has drawn one of the most difficult apparatus to begin rotation number one. Absolutely a tough event to start, especially with such a young team. But I guess the positive in this is that they get it out of the way early in the competition, and then they can let loose. Very stylish young gymnast Martinjack. Little bobble right there. Oh, but a nice cover up. And if you can start out with big scores on balance beam, whoa, that would certainly throw down the gauntlet. Certainly would build confidence, and then you head on to floor exercise, and you can really let go and enjoy the competition. We should remind you that this is quite literally a four-ring circus, so you're going to see fans standing up and cheering when it doesn't seem the least bit appropriate. In this case, some of the Georgia fans standing up cheering for a performance by their team while Martin Jack from LSU works on balance beam. Tremendous concentration is needed during this competition. It's it's loud. This arena is so compact, and the fans oh, are very oh, boisterous, oh. and she loses it. Tough break for Taryn Martinjack. 
She'll have to climb up and resume her routine. And you can see the disappointment on her face. Brian, I don't think that that fall was caused by the loud crowds. I think it was a pre-meet jitter. This is tough starting on beam. Just to finish up strong, round off double full, one step on the landing. The Taryn Martin Jack with a 9.250 goes over to her teammates. The score partly, in fact, mostly because of this. You could see she was a little off on her straddle jump. That first element, she was crooked going into the back handspring, which.